Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes. Do you want us to all have our video off? So welcome everyone. Yes, please have your video off and uh, please mute yourself or uh, we can also mute you. Um, unfortunately, we are having some technical difficulties. So the host of this event, um, Taryn, is having a little bit of problem connecting. So um, I'm her backup and I'm very much uh, looking forward and uh, honored to introduce you to Carla King, who will be our, our uh, speaker today. And if, Carla, if you would like to uh, take it from here and introduce the event, that would be wonderful. Sure, thank you to everybody for having me. I uh, love the Mechanics Institute. It's uh, such a San Francisco institution. I recently, recently took a position in business development at the San Francisco Writers Conference, but I've been a member of so many different writing groups over the years. And um, in 2001, in fact, my my writers group, it was very genre specific. We, um, we, we had so many great stories that weren't getting published that we published our own anthology. This was way back in 2001, and this is so easy to do today. And I'm just showing you this to inspire you because this is what connection really gets you. Um, we self-published it in 2001 and then uh, sold it to a uh, New York publishing house the next year. And um, I've, had, I've had other small writing groups. I'm a member of, uh, I started a virtual travel writing group just a few weeks ago when all this COVID-19 chaos came about because I felt like all of the travel writers, and I'm, which, of which I am one, as well as a how-to book author, are stuck now. <laughs> so we have to write those books and articles that we promised ourselves that we would do. Um, so I've also written memoirs on my travels and I have the self-publishing bootcamp guides for authors, which is in its fifth edition coming out next week, if you can believe it. I can't believe, uh, you know, and I already see a sixth edition coming out in a year and a half. I'm sure it, it'll go, it'll go forever. It's my project. So today, um, you can find me at carlaking.com and at selfpubbootcamp.com. And I just want to talk about uh, writing groups and creating uh, virtual writing groups because it really is so easy. I love the way technology has kept us together during this time. I've always loved it um, because I am a traveler and I've had met so many people all over the world via tools like you know, Facebook and Meetup and LinkedIn and, and even Twitter. Um, so what I'd like to do is uh, take you through the, st the story of how I created this virtual travel writing group because I think you could be inspired to create your own in this way. Now, I am a geek and so I use tech tools to their maximum and you don't have to be. So I'm gonna show you how I do it and I'm gonna tell, I, show you how simple it is just to do it more casually just with email and, and Zoom, for instance, okay? So I'm going to share this screen. So when I decided to create a virtual uh, writing group for travel writers, I created this homepage. Now, I use um, a, a mailing list manager called, mail, uh, called ConvertKit, but you can easily use MailChimp or Constant Contact or whatever. And I, I just created this form to get people signed up so that I didn't have to maintain my own email list. Now you can also just maintain your own email list, which is fine, depending. But um, I put the word out and I have a large network of travel writing friends. And I have over 100 people in this travel writers group right now. Now that doesn't mean that all 100 uh, participate. Uh, the, the biggest number of people that we've had so far is 19. That said is um, we've, we, we created, we had a discussion um, first. I created a, um, a Facebook page for the group. So I created a group in Facebook, and this may be a really easy way for you to manage your whole group, right? 
Um, so it's very easy to create a group. You just Google it and I'm going to uh, send you all a links to how to do all this stuff and all the tools that I'm talking about. So you, you can just click through more easily. All right. And so um, I created the event in the events panel over here and put all the information for the Zoom meeting uh, every Friday at 10 o'clock until December 18th of this, <laughs> this year, right? Uh, and so people RSVP, right? Um, not everybody that who signed up to be in the Virtual Travel Writers, Writers Group uh, have joined the Facebook group, but that's okay. Uh, not everybody uses Facebook. Um, <clears throat> So uh, I also created a questionnaire because I did want to get to know people. Now, you may already have a writer's group that you want to offline, you know, offline, offline, online, because we can't meet in person right now, but you may want to recruit people as well, um, maybe in your genre, whether it's, um, you know, mystery or memoir or, you know, sci-fi or magical realism or whatever. It's nice to cast the web widely. So I created in uh, forms, all you have to do is go to forms.google.com. They make it very easy for you to create a questionnaire that collects email addresses. And uh, you can ask all kinds of questions. You can make them um, required. There's a little button here that makes it required or not each question so that people who could, don't get through uh, all of the questions are automatically filtered out, right? If they're not, you know, really in it enough, they don't really want to enough, they might just drop out during the uh, questionnaire process, which is good because you only want people who are committed, correct? And then in Google Docs, I created an FAQ, and that's a frequently asked questions. Um, after we had that first meeting, the initial meeting with about, oh, I think 15 uh, writers showed up, and we talked about how we would run the group, um, you know, what was best for everybody. I kind of led the group and took the temperature on what kind of tools people were comfortable with. Um, and um, we set up, uh, I, I had suggested Dropbox at first to document share, and a lot of people were not comfortable with Dropbox because drop, Dropbox is, can be, I think it's easy, but a lot of people think it's complicated. So we upload our documents to a um, uh, Google Doc, a, a folder, and I can show you that. Uh, how to submit a document. So we have a folder that um, we, uh, sorry, this just goes, anyway, we have a folder and you can just drag your story into that folder online or you can paste in your story there. We've limited it to uh, 1500 words. The group runs for two hours. 15 minutes each submission. We get through about six submissions each week. Um, some of us are pitching ideas, which may take even just five or 10 minutes. Some of us are, are, are looking for help uh, with query letters. And this can be for books as well as for articles and, and newspapers, right? So um, we it, really everything, we didn't want to limit it to anything, but we're all working on travel, whether it's travel art articles, travel blog, uh, travel memoir, right? I hope that makes sense. Um, we also talked about feedback. Now, <laughs> this group has turned out to be so wonderful and so kind and, and really respectful in their comments uh, and their help. I found this uh, writer's loft, and I'll give you the URL to this, uh, tips for giving and receiving criticism in the group and, you know, how to respectfully help people um, and how to respectfully receive criticism. This is very important, right? Because writing, uh, in writing, you're sharing your soul, right? You're sharing a part of yourself. So 
oftentimes in writers groups that aren't that great, you feel like the criticism is directed toward you. And that is not you. And if that is happening, that is not your fault. It's the person who's critiquing and it's the leader's fault. So having somebody who knows how to run a writing group and who enforces respectful feedback is super, super important. Okay. Um, now I have another writing group um, here in uh, California and we meet at the library every Monday, but we can't do that anymore. So the leaders uh, went to email and OneDrive. OneDrive is Microsoft's answer to Google Drive, right? So um, I would drag my uh, story here and then um, they have created a Google, um, uh, what is it, a Google, it's not a Hangout, but a Google meeting to, uh, for their face-to-face, -face, all right? So that happens every Monday, also for two hours. And the rules are about the same, uh, 15 minutes each, uh, six or so, um, six or so uh, pieces to critique. Um, my Monday group has a half an hour free writing exercise prom with prompts every week as well. And I don't have that with the virtual travel writing group. Um, and there are a couple tools, geeky tools that I want to show you. One is beta books. And this is if you're writing books um, instead of stories. I know many of you are. Uh, beta books is a paid platform that allows you to upload your chapters and get feedback all in one place. And so you can invite your early readers and uh, if everybody in your writers group joins this, you can all work on your book together. Uh, there's also another uh, site called Scribbleophile, which does somewhat the same thing. It's more targeted toward writing groups and for getting um, like, uh, creating a writing group. I would say that beta books is for peer if you're writing nonfiction. So for my self-publishing bootcamp guide for independent authors, I used beta books and I invited people to critique inside beta books um, <clears throat> uh, my, my guide. Uh, it doesn't cost them anything, right? It just costs me, this is, I'm paying, uh, I think a hundred dollars a year for this platform. And um, so this one is more for people who don't have writing groups and everybody who's on this platform pays. Okay, um, so that's pretty much the, um, I'll stop sharing now. That's pretty much the, the thumbnail sketch of, of how to create mechanically a virtual writing group. And I, I think that's enough for me to talk and start a discussion now if, if anybody wants to jump in with questions. Is that right? And oh my gosh, I hope I've actually been broadcasting all this time. <laughs> yes, you have been. It was wonderful. Okay. Anyone has any question? Uh, we have a one question from RC. Could you elaborate on the differences between beta books and Scriffophile in a, a little bit? Sure. Betabooks um, is a platform where you would upload your book and, and it's in chapter format. So if you had 20 chapters, you'd have, you'd upload those one by one to your book uh, uh, area. And uh, so it works like this. You, your book is here and the comments area is here. And it's super nice because in the case of, of my self-publishing guide, I had Robin Cutler of Ingram Spark and Mark Coker of Smashwords and all these professionals with all these different companies um, reviewing my book, but I did not want them to see each other's comments, right? I mean, I wanted them to feel free to say, you know, oh, you got that part wrong all about this company and I didn't want them to have any consequences of, or, or competition inside of my book. So I turned that visibility off. So there was no discussion. Um, yeah, there was no discussion, um, but I could turn it on so that with my other book, The China Road Motorcycle Diaries, I've got the discussion area turned on. So people kind of 
feed, you know, feed off of each other's comments and say, oh yeah, I agree with that. I agree with what she said. And yeah, here's maybe a solution. Um, so there are different ways that you can use it. So um, when I invite people to critique my book or my story inside beta books, they, it's a free, it's free for them to do that. I pay for this platform, right? So I get to invite them in. Um, but with the other platform, I, which I am not a member of, so I just, I've just looked, uh, I've looked at it, um, you know, from the outside. From what I understand, people like it because you get, you know, people who are in, in this site, they're looking for other writers and they're looking for feedback from other writers in, in different genres. So everybody in this platform, so your ecosystem is limited to who's in this platform, the, the platform is very large, right? Um, so w what I do with um, beta books and Google Docs is I bring my people to my book or my stories and inside the scribophile platform pretty sure uh that's just for people who pay for the service okay so maybe if you don't have a big platform yet like you don't have early readers and i think it's it's really important to have early readers i have a blog post on selfpubbootcamp.com on um how to guarantee five star reviews on launch day and early readers beta readers critiques are are the key to getting five star reviews because when you have people helping you with your with your story and improving your story and you're interacting with them in this fun way this is actually called book marketing <laughs> but you're having fun doing it and you're doing it ahead of time not after your book is published walking in the room saying hey 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 here's my book hey here's my book and it's the first anybody's heard of it right so you're not going to get any reviews on on your amazon page when you do that, but if you've built a team, I mean, this is like building a team of fans or what you call a street team and creating community and participating community and everybody's helping each other. And it's just so rewarding and just so much more fun than after the fact marketing, isn't it? creating and maintaining the group. Are you the only admin? I am not the only admin. Um, what I did is in my questionnaire, and you could do this in email as well, is you could, um, <laughs> you, you can ask people who, uh, who's familiar with Facebook groups, will you help? Will you be an admin on Zoom? Like if I can't make it one day, can I add you? Can I add you to be an admin on Facebook? Um, will, you, will you help me? Um, and so I have five or six people who said, yes, I can help. And so we email back and forth. Um, uh, and, and so uh, if I don't show up for some reason, like my power went out or, you know, it, it's, whatever, uh, somebody can take over the, the running of the meeting and everybody's not just... Um, flailing about and everybody's got I, I think people would anyway because with zoom you can set your zoom meeting up so that the meeting can start without you right so mm -hmm. you can set it up to automatically record yes and yeah so it's kind of it's like I, I set it up that way because I thought well if I can't show up what will happen and these are proactive people some of them are very accomplished journalists and people who've written books um, and some of them aren't some of them are total rank beginners um, but I know somebody would take over and figure it out but it's always great to have a kind of a, a group of people who you trust to take over thank you um, next question is from Rick Holman um, Facebook groups allow questionnaires for screening new members. Are there any other ways of screening? Can you be sure everyone is there in good faith? Yeah, great question, Rick. Yes, um, that's why I designed the uh, questionnaire, right, to let them in. I designed the, uh, if you go to forms.google.com and you make all of the questions required, the people who are fakers are going to, 
they're going to drop out naturally, correct? Um, uh, in Facebook groups, I didn't know that there was a questionnaire. Oh, yes, I do. You know, thanks for reminding me, Rick. I didn't, I didn't remember that there was a questionnaire for screening new members. And I've done that before in groups where it says, why do you want to be in the group, right? And that's, um, that's cool. I'm going to thank you for reminding me of that. So my first level is them getting through the 20 questions. And what's nice too, is I give everybody in the group access to the answers for those questions. And I say that right up front. Um, so anybody can go to the spreadsheet that Google, Google just creates a spreadsheet and it's got your name and it's got every question and how you answered it. Because my goal for this larger virtual travel writing group wasn't to just you know, have me have a travel writing group. It was also in knowing that some people are very advanced. They're journalists. They're, they're publishing a National Geographic and a FAR and, you know, Vogue even and pl places like that. And other people are writing memoirs like me and other people are so just beginners. And so I figured that at some time um, that would, they, people would connect individually or we could break them out into different um, genres within travel writing and different purposes in travel writing and different levels of of travel writing very interesting thank you um then um we have um i'm sorry just give me one second we have lizette wanzer if I pronounce her name right, um, she's asking, how do you do breakout rooms in Zoom and what's the best way to handle turning in assignments and manuscript exchanges among group members? Thanks, Lizette. Yeah, I looked at breakout rooms with that in mind. Um, breakout rooms cost $50 a month. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I would have gone, yeah, boy, that would have been awesome. The memoirists go here, the uh, professional journalists go here, and the newbies go here, and then we could meet um, amongst ourselves, but that's expensive. So unless this group grows uh, and, and helps fund that, um, that's not going to happen. Um, but I think it's a, it's a wonderful idea, I, and I'm thinking about kind of a business model for the future of that. I also think whenever we had Zoom breakout rooms, they are on their own. So you don't really have a lot of oversight and input. Because oh, I they didn't are... know. You use them, really. Okay. Huh. Well, I don't use them for that reason because I don't have oversight what's going on in the breakout room, right? Got it. A... So if you had, maybe if you had a co-admins, you could have somebody leading each yeah. group. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that, Judith. And then the, for the second question, what's the best way to handle turning in assignments? Um, well, I, I use Google Docs. And so um, you can create a folder in Google Docs for your writing group for each week. So I have a vol folder called VTWG, Virtual Travel Writing Group. And then I have a folder for every Friday forever. <laughs> and so um, people just simply drag their story in into the folder. Now, like I said, um, if there are six stories in the folder, um, then unless somebody's just got a short pitch or a question or an idea, um, they won't, they'll, they'll put their story in the next folder. I actually want to encourage them to put it in the folder because you can tell what time they put it in the folder. So whoever put it in the folder, theirs in the last would go to the next week. Um, because there has been one time when somebody put their story in the folder and then they didn't show up because they had a power outage. Um, so we would have had time for that extra story. So did I answer the question? Yeah, I think so. I also think that uh, the breakout room seems to be free if you have a pro subscription. Um, so, uh, that might be the fifty dollar might be just for the basic um, yeah. uh, the basic um, account and an add on. Um, we have a question from uh, Barbara. Um, uh, let me try to find it. Um, I have, I think it's her. Have you? Yeah, Barbara Santos. Have you experienced the interaction is better 
the same or just different in live versus online meetings? Oh, thanks, Barbara, for that. Well, nothing beats sitting around a table and, you know, my wild riding women group, we would make dinner and drink wine and often, you know, sleep on each other's couches. <laughs> And so that was, that was awesome. But we were, you know, we were best besties. We were best friends. So that's different from the library uh, group. Um, you know, nothing replaces in-person meetings, but you are limited geographically. So um, I have a friend who is stuck in Uganda. They're from Canada. She's from Canada and she's stuck in Uganda right now because of the virus. And she's in the writing group right? Uh, we have uh, somebody in Casablanca. Uh, we have uh, two people in Johannesburg. <clears throat> uh, they're all uh, one in um, uh, Bavaria, um, west coast of California. There's a bunch of us uh, and uh, all through the U.S. So what you give up in personal interaction, you gain in uh, geographic diversity. Yep. Um, I oh, don't let me, have any let me other... go a little bit further on that. Yep. Okay, so I think the real question was like, how do you interact? So um, imagine that there are 12 of us in this meeting and all your faces are showing, right? You can only, because there are so many people in this meeting, the, fa you know, the video is turned off. So that's the nice thing about Zoom is because you, you can get visual cues from somebody they want to you know like oh oh they they're actually raising their hand and there is you know just like in a group group there's a little bit of interrupting and like oh yeah i felt the same way that kind of thing so i'm finding it's um it's pretty similar um if you can see the person you can look at the body language right i hope that yes. answers your question yes any other questions from the audience please type in in the chat box. You can find the chat box under the camera, uh, a little chat box function, and you can just type in your question. So while now, we're Judith? waiting for, what, do you wanna ask a question, Taryn? Hi, Carla. Thanks so much for a fantastic conversation. <laughs> You're welcome. You did wonderfully, and so did you, Judith. Thank you so much for, uh, uh, hosting the meeting since I got logged out. <laughs> it happened. Looks like, looks like there is another question from Judy. Are all of these groups free to participants? Is there a way you could monetize them? Um, hi, Judy. Um, yeah, they're free. Um, I, I created it as a group effort. I didn't really create it as a business model, although <laughs> I think I might actually, I did used to teach travel writing and I may do that again with a virtual class or something. It's just giving me an idea, right? Um, but yeah, we're doing it for free. I'm using my uh, Dropbox uh, and I'm using my Zoom account now because I, I pay for Zoom because I do webinars and I, I have clients uh, who, who I talk with about self-publishing or editing. Uh, their travel book or whatever. So I already have paid for it. Um, and I already pay for the premium Dropbox because I share a lot of files and I like to back up my files there. Um, and Google Docs is free uh, up to a certain number uh, of megabytes. So um, I am paying, uh, funding it sort of in a, in a way. If, you, if nobody in your group has those tools, you would probably, uh, I think Zoom is free up to a certain number of people. Google Docs is free mm. to a certain number of people. Dropbox um, is, uh, does Dropbox even have a free plan? There are free, there are free tools out there for you to use for sure. And then Sally Singing Tree has a question about um, optimal group size. I know at Mechanics Institute, the groups tend to be six to 10 with the sweet spot being six or seven or eight. What yeah. do you think for, for an online virtual group? Yeah, it's interesting because um, this is the thing with this group is, I think it's gonna be different for everybody. Um, my Wild Riding Women group were 12, uh, 
women travel writers. None of us were in town at the same time. And so I think that six, seven, eight of us were there at any one time. Um, in this group, there are a lot of people who want to break into travel writing and they don't know really how travel writing works or they're beginners or they just want to do some writing for themselves and their family. And I think some of those people are sharing, but some of many of them are watching uh, how the group runs. They're participating in the critiques, but they're not submitting yet. So there were 19 people in the room last week, but only I, I would say eight or nine participated in the discussion. Now that said, when I looked at the chat, there was a lot of participation happening in the chat as well. And also in the Google Doc, you can comment directly in the Google Doc. And so some people who don't come to the group meeting or who can't or have a conflict will comment on the document itself. And um, that way those, those comments are public to others who are reading the doc and they play off each other. So it's almost this ideal little um, multimedia whirlwind that's going on that I'm finding very, very interesting and, and very respectful. Um, great. The next question is um, from Jackie Davis Martin, and I'm going to ask her to, uh, to to ask her question herself. Jackie, can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay. Uh, the question is, you started out, I, I there actually have two questions there. The first thing you started out, I was trying to take notes. You mentioned something about convert or some kind of form. Oh, convert and there were two others. I didn't catch those. The next one goes along with that. Uh -huh. And that is, is Facebook the only way to organize a group? No, no. Uh, okay. So yeah, I, I, uh, instead of collecting emails by asking, you know, like typing in their emails every mm -hmm. time I use my mailing, my email marketing manager and mine is convert kit and yours might be constant contact or MailChimp or something like that. I recommend if you don't have an email newsletter, get one right now. Okay. Um, it's free up to 2000 subscribers and you don't even have to have a website to get one. So if you go to MailChimp, for instance, you can get a landing page and start collecting email addresses. Okay. Um, and so, so uh, I have uh, everybody who signs up for my travel writing group gets tagged as travel writing group, right? And so I just go into MailChimp or ConvertKit or uh, whatever mailing list manager that you choose and send an email to all of those people. And they can unsubscribe, you know, you don't, they, you know, they can change their email address they can change their name. They can change any data about themselves. So it's a hands-off way for me to collect and communicate with these people. Um, may, may I chime in just for one uh, note? So when you use these email addresses, California law or emails providing services, one of the great things that you use constant contact or MailChimp or things, they take care of the legal background because California has a very strict, um, or, or the whole US has a strict on subscribe ability. So every, every customer needs to have the ability to unsubscribe from any email blast. So when you use these, um, when you use these uh, platforms, they take care of that. And with every email, they include an unsubscribe link, which per law is required. So it's very useful. Great. Absolutely. All right. Um, then we have another question from Judy, or sorry, from Lizette Wenzer, uh, asking if you have any opinion on open board versus blackboard. You know, you've, I just saw that question and I, I don't know anything about them. Um, these look like interactive whiteboards for, uh, or blackboards for schools and university. Um, 
teaching software. I think that would be interesting for teaching. Um, but if you, uh, yeah, it, it might be, a, it might be interesting to be able to comment for a writing group to be able to comment on a document. I'll have to look at those. So thank you for, for, um, pointing those out to me. I don't know anything about them. Okay. And then she also had a question about WebEx versus Skype versus go to meeting. Can you comment on this? <laughs> well, I'm using Zoom. <laughs> and you're six using of one, Zoom, half a dozen of the other. <laughs> you know, um, I know that people have a terrible time with um, go to meeting and WebEx. Um, Skype, can you do big groups in Skype? You probably can, multi person groups. Um, there's also one I was on a webinar, Kevin Tomlinson's webinar the other day, and it was called. Mm, streamyard.com and um, all of these like zoom will actually stream to your Facebook group so I think you can use zoom or streamyard to run your meeting inside Facebook and then people can go to the Facebook live even later which is kind of cool and use you can actually use your Facebook group as a commenting, you know, machine there and have everybody's activities centered there because your Facebook group also has your events so you can contact people about events. Um, so, you know, it's super interesting how, I mean, everybody's going to use these tools in the way that they're most comfortable with. Um, so I, th I just think it's nice to be able to pick and choose and experiment. Great. Well, you're doing great on the hot seat here. <laughs> <laughs> we, ha we have one more question that we, um, sort of, you sort of touched on just now, um, about whether Facebook is the ideal sort of group management social media platform that is that the one that you like best, or can you think of something else? I mean, there used to be Yahoo groups which yeah. of course doesn't have the same functionality as Facebook now does, but can you think of another platform for writing group management that might be comparable? Um, you know, I can't, I have long used Facebook um, as, as a, somebody who travels and who likes to keep in contact with people all around the world and visit them when I can and vice versa. Uh, Facebook has become the go-to place for us mm -hmm. um, to create groups. You know, I have women in motorcycling group, uh, you know, uh, uh, women who write, who ride motorcycles, like who write for the motorcycle industry <laughs> group. And those That's little right. niche groups, and it's just, they make it so easy. It's, um, I, I know people love to hate Facebook, but then, so they jumped to Instagram. So that's owned by Facebook, by the way, <laughs> all of these, like WhatsApp owned by Facebook, um, it, whatever it's faults, uh, it is a great, a great organizing platform. My, my, I don't use it for super personal stuff. Like I don't put super personal stuff in the chats or you know, I just assume that everything I do on Facebook or any other social media platform because of one of their mistakes or a, an attack or something could be laid out for the public to see, right? Um, so I don't use it for ultra personal communications. And I, I think it's a great marketing platform and a great organizational platform. That's my answer right. and I'm okay, sticking that's... to it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> well, I think a lot of um, a lot of your commentary is really going to be useful. I think to our our crowd here, um, we I think have covered all of the questions. Any last questions before we relieve Carla? Because I, I can tell she is. Um, we're really tapping her knowledge here. <laughs> That's all right. I got <laughs> any more other the, questions. I got more where that came from, and in fact, let me tell you that. Um, uh, I have a free consumer's guide that you can get from my selfpubbootcamp.com website and it's called the consumer's guide for self-publishers, but it could, it's for writers. Just it, 
as well, even if you're not self-publishing. I should retitle that. And it's got a review of all these tools. And thank you for the heads up about Blackboard and OpenBoard and all that, because I'll go take a look and add those as well. Um, it's it's got um, you know, like beta books and scribbly of file in in it. So if you want my, I don't know, I, I took it upon myself in 2008 when the whole self publishing technology and the writing tools came, you know, on the scene and the internet to keep track of them all. <laughs> they they just snowballed wow. over the years. <laughs> I know. So you know, a few years ago, I was like, oh, it's so hard to keep up. But um, it's nice because the, the owners, the founders of these companies know me and they, they tell me things so like, hey, will you include our tool in, in, your, in your booklet? And so it's a way for me to um, keep up with it. I'm not all alone in doing that. So I do know an awful lot about technology that helps writers from tools like ProWriting Aid and Grammarly and um, Master Writer and AutoCrit, you know, all those editing, oh, and Fictionary, which is amazing. And um, all of these amazing tools for editing your book and creating your book and publishing your book. So um, <clears throat> I'd love it if you, uh, you know, pinged me like about any of the ones I don't have in the book, like this open board. Lizette, thank you, or a Blackboard, um, and the way it can be useful for writers, because I do like to keep track of it, and um, to, it helps me a lot to, to learn from you guys, too. Great. Well, one other question popped in, and this is more on the sensitive side. Um, how do you handle members of groups who need, who feel they need to leave because they're their interests aren't being served or somehow there's a personality clash. Do you have any words of wisdom for me on that, on that topic? Um, resigned from the group. Um, you know, I did have somebody the other day resign from the group. Um, I, I know I knew him and he was just feeling overwhelmed because he wasn't published and he wasn't really ready. And so he, um, he just get sent because he know we we're tra both travelers and we've known each other for a long time. Uh, he just said, "Oh, I'm diving out of the group. Nothing personal. I'm just kind of overwhelmed right now." But I think if you set it up correctly, like for example, you use Mailchimp or Constant Contact or ConvertKit, and people can unsubscribe. And so what I've seen is I had about ten people drop off three weeks in which was good because 10 more people <laughs> came, came on and 10 people just simply hit that unsubscribe button at the bottom of the email. And that didn't, that didn't hurt my feelings. Um, in the group, I have to say, um, in writing groups, I don't know how many, how many of you have cried in a writing group? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of laughing going on. But, you know, writing fiction or nonfiction, because it all comes from inside of you, can create, uh, you, I mean, you're revealing yourself. And if you're writing your best writing, correct, you're really right. revealing yourself and you're touching other people. And I've had people who started crying because they were critiquing something and they're like, I so connect with that. And never, all of a sudden, everybody's crying. Um, and you have to create as a work as a, a, a writing group leader or a workshop leader a safe place um, which is why at the beginning of each story i've asked or or query letter or whatever i've asked people to um, ask the group what they want from this piece and so i'm like here's my piece here's what it is uh, rip it apart. I have a completely hard shell, right? I just want to get it published. And there are many writers in that group who are like that. Like, just go, don't sugarcoat it. <laughs> and other people are like, I'm really new. I just would like some gentle, I'm doing this as a personal project. I would just like some gentle direction. And I think that in itself, that requirement to say what you want, what it's for, what you want from it, um, and kind of like the level of critique that you want sets the scene for that respect and that, 
you know, that helping mode <clears throat> uh, for, for the critiques. And so far, um, in all, I have never had any kind of um, abuse happen in any of my writing groups. Um, it's kind of phenomenal, but I think it's because there's always been a strong, strong leadership who knows how to shut, shut that down if it could even start to occur. But I think the setup is more important. I might've gone above and yeah, beyond I, answering that question, but I hope that helps. No, those, that was incredible advice for, I think, uh, an in-person and a virtual writers group. So uh, yeah, providing the, providing the people, the, the writers with the tool to kind of guide the feedback uh, and the experience. I think that that's, that's really helpful. All right, now Barbara Santos has a question. She wants to know if you and your group plan to turn your submissions into a, uh, a book. You know, it's, it's already come up. Um, <laughs> it's come up because there are so many stuck right, uh, travel writers and travelers in this time. Uh, like I said, my friends in Uganda and um, people who just aren't at home. And we're like, maybe we should just quick create a, a, an anthology about travelers in the time of COVID. Where are you? What, what the heck? You must be in an interesting situation. So it could happen. It might, but it has to be a group effort. I, um, this is a thing when you start a project like that, there has to be a leader and it's a time suck to create an anthology. It really is. Um, so if there's a great group who's willing to co-edit and put in the work, it's completely doable. And if it's not on a timely topic, like if your book, if you're writing mystery stories or romance stories, it's, it's just, just start and, and have a Google uh, doc for the best of your, a Google folder for the best of your stories, just to start workshopping them with an eye toward publishing and promoting your work and all of your compadres work as well. It's a great goal. Well, that, that sounds like a wonderful way to end this session. It seems like you have had a phenomenal number of, uh, kudos here in the chat section. Um, and I personally have to thank you for your wonderful, um, you know, saving the day, saving this event since uh, I got logged out. <laughs> That's all right. Judith took up the slack too. I was just like, the, the stress, the stress is not health. It, it's the health of us and the health of the internet as well. It's stressing all of our infrastructure. So it's great to be able to have groups like this when we can't meet in person. And got people who who know how to use the tech i love it right yes thank you judith you did mm -hmm. fantastic and i want to thank all of the people that uh, joined us today let's see what the final count is we've got 30 people um thank you all and if you have any um questions you can email me uh, t edwards at milibrary.org and uh carla's url is self pubbootcamp.com and I'm sure you can find her all over the web if you want to. Um, I will include her URL in the event listing when we um, post this uh, video on um, YouTube and of course we'll spread it all over Facebook as well. All right, thank you all and thank you Carla and uh, I look forward to seeing you virtually. Thank you. Thank you. I'll look forward to seeing you at the Mechanics Institute Library, hopefully soon, too. Hopefully soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>